Chapter Eight of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Eight, in which Claude pitches against the Rockaways and meets with another trial. Play ball, called the umpire, and Snyder John, a stunted youth, one of the three outsiders, took his place at the bat. Frank Elmwood had told Claude to give him a high ball but alas claude's fingers slipped in the act of delivery it was the first time he had ever pitched in a real contest and he sent the ball straight over the plate and not quite waist high o'neill in centre field had a hard run to catch up with the long line ball that snyder john knocked and when he had returned it to the infield the heavy batsman was standing on third base the high flyers were startled and uneasy claude perhaps was to turn out an exploded phenomenon as gardner waited at the plate he was the second of the outsiders a great stillness came over all and claude felt that he was in danger of becoming nervous the college boys some eighty or ninety in attendance had nothing to say knock a home run gardner broke in snyder john that pitcher is a pie am i cried claude angrily then he turned and faced the batter with all his nervousness gone the coolest most fearless boy on the field this is the fellow who doesn't want an end curve he whispered to himself one strike called the umpire as the ball whirled in and over the plate two strikes he said as the next ball was batted at vainly by gardner then waist-high straight over the base and swift came the third ball and before the batter had made up his mind to strike the ball was in the hands of archer claude's catcher the friends of the rockaways applauded when williams advanced to the plate he was the third outsider and according to elmwood was the best batter on the team archer pulled up one of his stockings that meant give this man his base on balls four balls take your base said the umpire presently o'brien the next batter knocked a slow grounder to the shortstop it was what is called a good sacrifice hit for snyder john was nearly home before the shortstop who had been playing deep could put his hands on it allowing snyder john to score he threw o'brien out at first jones struck out and the high flyers came in with cheerful faces claude had after all come up to their expectations dan dockery was their first batsman he was not a powerful hitter but he had a knack of getting his base by hook or by crook in the innocent sense of this phrase and once on base the chances were in favour of his getting around for he was both quick and sure-footed the second ball pitched came straight at dan's ribs covering his side with his arm he stepped back with measured deliberation just as the ball was upon him it struck him full on the arm take your base said the umpire you did that a purpose shouted pitcher snyder indignantly did what laughed dan as he trotted down to first i thought you did it archer who had now stepped up to the plate suppressed a grin he knew dan's tricks the captain of the juniors made a mistake in judgment for he struck at a drop ball which came below his knee it rolled toward first but dan was safe on second before the first baseman could touch his bag when claude faced the pitcher he received a rousing greeting from the college boys his cheeks flushed with pleasure claude wanted a high ball and the second one pitched was just an inch or two above his shoulder his bat met it full and square the ball went on a line over the third baseman's head bounded high over the left fielder and before it was returned to the diamond dockery had scored and claude stood on third base i say snyder john called out frank elmwood how's your pie pearson knocked a fly to short right field darby the fielder of that position caught it after a lively run then claude who had kept one foot on third base till the ball touched darby's hands dashed for home darby threw the ball in
but claude the fleet of foot had beaten it walter collins rob's younger brother went out on a foul fly to the first baseman and the second inning began with the score two to one in favor of the high flyers darby struck out and healy followed his example phillips drove a swift grounder to pearson who fumbled it then threw wide of the first baseman and thus allowed phillips to reach third snyder knocked a fly to walter collins and the rockaways took the field in the high flyers half of the inning o'neill made a base hit but he was left on second as the three following batsmen went out in one two three order snyder john did not get the kind of a ball he wanted this time he knocked a high fly to collins who caught it with ease gardner took his base on balls williams hit the first ball and sent it straight and hard at claude claude muffed it but picking it up quickly threw the runner out o'brien made three strikes and gardner was left on second dan dockery was easily retired on a grounder archer did not repeat his error of judgment he struck the ball for two bases and stole third claude deliberately knocked a slow grounder between first and second base he was thrown out but archer scored on this model sacrifice hit pearson did nothing at the bat and the juniors walked into the field with the score three to one in their favor claude now surpassed himself three batsmen retired each with three strikes recorded against him and forthwith the high flyers plucked up heart of grace walter collins made a single o'neill advanced him to second on his out at first and drew sent the ball far into right field bringing collins home and reaching second base overbeck made a first on a juggled ball and stein brought both home on a long fly which was misjudged by the center fielder dockery took his base on balls archer made a sacrifice hit after dockery had stolen second bringing in stein and with two out and dockery on third claude came to the bat hit it for all you're worth no sacrifice this time whispered archer claude gave a mighty swing of his bat as the third ball came curving in over the plate and the centre and left fielder both started out at full speed after the ball which was rolling toward the boundary of the ball ground it was a good three base hit pearson made a neat single and claude scored collins was thrown out by the third baseman score at the end of the fourth inning nine to one in favor of the juniors healy phillips and snyder of the opposing nine were easily put out the first on a fly to the second baseman and the other two on easy grounders for the high flyers o'neill and drew made singles o'neill tallied on overbeck's out at first but drew was left on third as stein struck out and dockery was retired on a foul to the third baseman score at the end of the fifth inning ten to one in favor of the juniors the opposing players were now in a very bad humor they saw that with claude in the box they could do very little snyder john as he stepped to the bat received a whispered communication from healy the captain of the rockaways harry archer's quick ear caught the words if you get a chance let the pitcher hit you then harry waved his left hand to claude which meant pitch a swift straight ball claude obeyed one strike snyder john stood like a statue one ball two balls two strikes still snyder john moved not a muscle look out screamed claude as the next ball came from his hand but snyder john moved not till the ball struck him squarely in the ribs then he gave a scream of pain and threw his bat savagely at claude who barely succeeded in dodging it did i hurt you cried claude running up to the home plate i didn't want to hit you for answer snyder john struck him a violent blow on the mouth claude never deliberately went into a fight but it had been his constant habit to return any blow given him i say habit for our reckless little friend had so often provoked his older companions by acts of thoughtlessness that the present situation was by no means new to him 
the result was that claude was frequently drawn into a bout with lads his superiors both in weight and strength that mattered little to claude he knew not what physical fear was with a flush of anger he raised his fist and was about to answer in kind when with a sudden paling of the features he checked himself and returned to his box goodness gracious he reflected that was hard but i hope it'll make up for my conduct to mr grace bravo little claude frank elmwood and rob collins did not take the matter so calmly bah you wretched coward cried frank advancing on snyder john with flashing eyes i've a notion to rub your wretched ears into your wooden warehouse of a head he nearly killed me answered snyder john none of that snyder john broke in archer it was your own fault you wanted to be hit and you got it in the ribs maybe i didn't hear your captain a whispering to you that's a lie said snyder john you'd better remember that you're talking to a gentleman put in rob collins hotly which doesn't happen to you very often who are you roared snyder john no thanks answered rob i'd prefer to get along without being introduced but i say archer this thing has gone far enough that fellow's a fraud he's sixteen if he's a day and he doesn't belong to the east side he lives in the southern part of the city make their captain healy stand up to his agreement if you don't i'll try to get my brother home i don't care about his playing with a fellow like that healy who was something of a gentleman though not remarkable for strength of character gave in to archer's demand snyder john slunk into the crowd and the game proceeded the substitute for snyder john took first base however as he was thrown out in an attempt to steal second nothing came of it gardner's fly was caught by the right fielder williams redeemed his waning reputation by making a two-base hit he remained on second base as o'brien struck out the juniors started their half of the inning very well archer made a safe hit stole second and easily made third on the grounder which claude knocked into the first baseman's hands pearson was the second out on a long fly to center field on which archer scored collins struck out score at the end of the sixth inning eleven to one claude was standing in the pitcher's box and about to begin the seventh inning when he suddenly dropped the ball and calling time ran toward the backstop all turned their eyes in that direction and saw snyder john flying down the street with claude's hat but claude had been so quick to discover this contemptible act of treachery that snyder john who was a poor runner in comparison with his pursuer very shortly gave up the attempt at flight and turning swung the bat in rapid half circles about his face nothing daunted claude with a quick dive caught his adversary about the feet and brought him suddenly to the ground receiving as he did so a sharp blow upon his right leg snyder john was making another attempt to strike this little boy with the bat when frank elmwood who had at once rushed to the scene of action caught him by the neck and swinging him to his feet shook him as a dog would shake a rat drop that bat he commanded and the bat was dropped now sir make yourself scarce or it will be the worse for you and as frank spoke he released his hold muttering some ugly words snyder john shambled away claude had received an ugly blow and it was several minutes before the game could be resumed although his leg pained him not a little he pitched with the same energy it was now growing dark and the batsmen struck out in one two three order archer saw that claude could not hold out for two more innings and asked the umpire to call the game on account of darkness healy would have protested ordinarily but now he was so ashamed of snyder john's conduct that he submitted without demur and so the high flyers left the field with a glorious victory over what had thus far been the invincible small boys nine of milwaukee claude was hardly able to walk his leg was swelling more and more each minute 
frank elmwood and rob collins took him between them and bracing him up firmly brought him home but for all their merry words and sincere congratulations they could bring no cheer to claude's heart on the morrow the boys of the first communion class were to begin a three days retreat and now he could scarcely move his leg and his upper lip was sadly puffed out from Snyder John's cowardly blow. He feared, and as the event proved, not without reason, that he would be kept at home for at least two days, and of all days the two that were so important. Had it not been for the presence of his kind friends, Claude would have cried. But where they failed to console, Kate succeeded she listened that evening as he lay in bed with his leg in bandages to his account of the ball game it was so good of you dear she said with her eyes beaming not to have returned that blow claude you know how we're all so anxious about your temper mamma was afraid only last year that it was going to be ungovernable it's an awful bad one yet kit if it weren't for my religion i don't know what would become of me and it's all owing to you, Kit, that I've improved the little I have. Well, dear, you have never told me anything that encourages me so much as the way you acted when that boy struck you. Is that so, Kit? In the delighted energy with which he put this question, Claude jumped up in bed, only to fall back with a suppressed groan as a sharp pain shot through his leg. It is, dear, indeed it is. You remember the story of Pancratius and how he refused to return the blow? You thought he was a hero. Well, my dear, God helped you in much the same way as he helped him. Yes, but wasn't I just boiling over? I felt as if I could have given my life to return that blow. So much the better. You had more to conquer. Claude, my brother, I am sure that you will grow up to be a noble man thank you kit and now i'm willing to stay in bed for two days i'm glad i reminded you of pancratius but the boy that i love even more than him is the little chap who died taking care of the blessed sacrament kate tarsisius is my hero and i so wish i were like him then kate and claude said night prayers with swelling hearts End of chapter eight